Let's say that I see Richard or I see Marta. Do you know how long it takes my brain to make an initial assessment of the physical qualities that you have, gender, age, height, uh, skin tone? How long do you think it takes me to make a mental note of those things? About seven one thousandths of a second. It's that quickly. We are programmed to do this. So we'll call that our perceptions. How I'm dressed, how you're dressed, how we're, how our, what our posture is like. All these things we make note of very quickly. But then what happens is this. Our brains very quickly go into a processing mode to assign meaning to those things that we observe. And in less than another four tenths of a second, we have already landed on a behavior and a response by outcome or output. So in less than half of a second, we have sized each other up and we're already in motion without ever going a step further. And that's one of the reasons why we end up treating people poorly sometimes is because we're acting on very, very limited information. So let's understand what goes on in this association and evaluation process. You see the limited, how many of you are familiar with Malcolm Gladwell and some of his books? Blink and there's a term he uses called thin slicing. Anybody remember thin slicing? It's about how we take just little mini chunks of information and we try to cluge those together with our own little algorithm into some kind of truth. Well, that's what we do with each other. And every, even the, though the information is limited, it kind of goes through this series of coffee filters in our head. When I'm meeting somebody, I'm seeing somebody I already know possibly, the very first thing I'm thinking is, okay, I'm not thinking about the fact that I have a very limited information. I skip that. I go to my needs and wants. How does being around you affect what I need and want right now? Are you going to help me or are you going to get in my way? That's being taken into consideration. My attitudes, values, and core beliefs about you or people like you, whatever groups I've, I've assigned to you. And then there's my self-esteem and my self-image. How do I feel about, about me when I'm around you? Do people like you tend to make me feel good about myself or do I feel insecure about myself? whether you have anything to do with it or not, just simply my processing, then there's my personal experiences. Then there is my biases, which we'll talk about a, a little bit later, my preferences for this group or that group, even down to the level of genetics. Some of our instinctual responses to differences in other people, you don't even have to learn. Just like a rabbit does not have to be afraid of the fox, it just learns that instinctually. We now know that there are certain things in our warning system that are just there because they've been passed down through our gene pool. And so I guess I'm kind of surprised that we don't treat people with disrespect more frequently because all this is designed to keep us safe.